Hello, Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in with Team 818, the Steel Armadillos, here at the first in Michigan State Championship. The Steel Armadillos had a fantastic 2023 season. They were state finalists in Michigan. They were Curie winners in third place at the World Championship. They won Macomb last weekend from the four alliance spot. This robot's awesome. They're looking for more here at the state championship. Here with me, I have Tofik, Sam, and Noah to tell us more about the sleek robot with so much more to unpack on Behind the Bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, Tofik, why don't you get us started? Tell us through the note path on your robot. How does it intake? How does it shoot? Every good robot starts from the ground up. So from implementing from past seasons and scouting thousands of robots, we knew that we had to go under the bumper. Under the bumper, the best way for protection and just gives us, once you touch it, we got it. From through here, under the bumper, comes up, goes around here, with our photo eye sensor, senses our intake and our index, which allows us to directly go into the shooter. Fantastic. You want to demo that, that note path there? Really speedy. Well yeah. done. You it takes a little bit more into the shooter, the indexing of your robot? So again, as you see, we have photo eye sensors. These are like industrial kind of sensors with our reflectors over here seeing, sending a different red light back to make it seem because this photo eye sensor wants to see that specific light back. Then goes up to the shooter. We have two of those sensors and we have another one in the shooter. With that, once the intake is, once the note is inside the intake, it gives them a haptic feedback to the driver. And once it gets into the shooter, it gives a haptic feedback to the operator knowing ready to shoot. So from our shooter, we see that it's a somewhat fixed angle because we knew that around this angle is about the best degree where we can shoot, amp, and trap. So I see you have four wheels here and two wheels here. What's the story behind that and the prototyping process that led to that decision? So before we saw a lot of robots having four wheels on one side, seeing that having that spin. But once we realized that's too much spin and it gives us a faulty wobble when shooting. So we gave out that with the four, it gives us more surface. So on that side, it gives out more spin and this side gives out not as much. Very cool. Sam, do you want to take us a little bit more? What is the climbing look on your robot and the decision-making process to the climb that you guys have? Yeah, so we have a climber here. It's just like, it's a basic climb. We ended up, we had a trap mechanism, but it ended up being too much. It was overcomplicated and it, um, it caused our shooter to jam. So we couldn't shoot any notes. So it was inhibiting us from like performing as well as we could. So we decided to take that stage off. And now we just have a climber with these hooks that were redesigned for better like mounting onto the chain. And um, so it comes up and then it has a ratchet that engages that keeps the climber from descending. Cool, then Sam, why don't we, or, or Noah, sorry, why don't you <laughs> take us through some of the programming on the robot? All right, so on the programming side of things, I think the biggest deal uh, is these line lights right here. So we have a two plus down here and we have our three right here. And we also had a mount here. This three was originally on the bottom side because our goal is to do object detection during auto. Um, that's still on the table if we do make worlds, um, but for now the three's up here because it's the best camera. So we want that looking at the April tag while we're shooting. Uh, so we do have aimbot, so from anywhere pretty much wing lined up on that side of the field, sort of, uh, I guess, podium over, we can hit a shot. Uh, so we use that aimbot in auto, so we can shoot, usually we shoot under the chain, that's sort of our sweet spot. Um, but we can shoot pretty much anywhere during auto and teleop, that uh, same process is used. Um, I guess on the other side of things, we do have these sensors here as well. We have a fully, um, so once we intake, the note goes through fully autonomously. So we have a background command that's always running. So once you intake the note, I can stop holding the intake and it's still going to find its way to the shooter. And then like Tofik mentioned, it's going to vibrate the controller and let us know it's ready to shoot. Uh, I guess the, the final thing that, the biggest thing we moved over to this year um, is an auto instead of using what we were using last year, which I think was time-based. Uh, we're now using Path Planner with the CTRE um, sort of library. So it's kind of built in and obviously we added our own stuff on top of that to make it a little more accurate. Um, but with that, we've seen pretty good success with autos as well, so. Well, thank you so much, Noah. Great yeah, automation here from the Steel Armadillos. 
thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Awesome robot. We can't wait to see how, how you do here at the Michigan State Championship. Thank you so much for watching this Behind the Bumpers. My name is James, signing out for First Updates Now. Support Funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.